uh, uh, Grizzlies. On the other side, 457 per game for Snow College. So you're thinking if we're going to see an out, uh, you know, offensive, you know, outburst, it's going to be from Snow College. Has not been the case today. Butler has been uh, very effective. Big plays, whether it's running the ball with Bo Johnson or the long plays, uh, uh, you know, receiving as well. Uh, that they have really lit up the scoreboard uh, on, on, you know, both passing and running. Well, that's, I guess, the good news if you're a Snow College fan, and that is you know your offense is capable of doing that. But right now they trail by 22, and they better get something going on this possession because you just don't have all that much time, and they've showed no ability to really stop Butler, and that has to be the scariest thing for you. Just a reminder for Jazz fans, get ready as Darren Williams, Andre Kirilenko, and the Utah Jazz face the Miami Heat. At 7 o'clock on Monday night on FSN, your home for the Utah Jazz. And what a win last night. Short-handed, Mehmet Okur out, Carlos Boozer out. And all we saw was Andre Kirilenko the way that we are used to seeing him. He was absolutely incredible. Just one block away from a 5-by-5 from five five. Five five yep. with a triple-double as part of it. And I don't know that anybody has ever done that in NBA history. Got a 5-by with a triple-double as part of it. Amazing performance Impressive by Andre play Kirilenko. last night. Great win over the Lakers for the Utah Jazz. At the 35-yard line, first and 10 now for Snow College. Find themselves down 22 points to Butler. Eastman throws, and behind the intended receiver on the play, Regan Buck. Luckily, that one didn't get picked off. But good coverage on the part of Butler and the pass behind the receiver. Now, I really think on the last offensive possession for Snow College, they were able to see some things that they want to try to exploit in the secondary of Butler uh, here in this game. Uh, that wasn't one of them throwing into a double coverage right there, but I, I think there were a few things on the outside that they will probably try to take advantage of. Takai is the running back, and the tight end once again is in the slot as a lead back, and we've seen that formation. It goes to Takai. Takai cuts off the left side, runs an official over, and you know what? That's the same guy. That's the umpire. That is the toughest place to be as an official is that umpire because you're right in that defensive backfield and sometimes you can't see the guy coming through the line, the ball carrier, and it's you Kevin Diornelis again. You watch me, he's right here and he's gonna get run over. And, and this time watch, he bounced, he bounced right back up. Watch, he'll get up quickly and say, I'm all right, I'm all right. It's not like last time, I'm not gonna stay on the ground here. Well, this guy has been officiating for 22 years. He's a president and CEO of Universal Time Equipment Company. Well, his timing was a little bit off on that play, so. Oh, it is the alternate. You know, I beg your pardon, that is the alternate. Just looking at him, that is not the same official that went down earlier. So, Diornelis did not come back as his first down run on the play. Then he, 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 He's aware, then, that he can't go yeah, down. Yeah, well, he's it, also he's he should be aware that this is a dangerous job because <laughs> his predecessor already went down. Well, it's tough to be an umpire. It's tough to be an official at any time, but certainly today. Yeah, that's that's the alternate. And you know what? I don't have his bio. I got a bio on everybody else on the team. You got to be a starter to get a bio. I guess that's it. Yeah. I guess that's it. Well, either way, it's a first down for the Snow College Badgers. They move the football. The question is, do they have enough time? Three minutes remaining here, third quarter. They need three touchdowns and they need a two-point conversion just to break even. There's White on the pressure. Eastman finally dodges it and throws, but it disrupted again his timing enough that he couldn't find his receivers. A couple of guys were out there. Takai was the underneath guy, and the deeper receiver was Kimball Burton, and the ball bounced somewhere between the two of them. Marcus White once again, just the pressure that he has put on Eastman all day long. Even when he doesn't get to him, he's rushing the pass. He, he, he's changing what Eastman has to do. And it brings up second down right at midfield, the line of scrimmage. Again, those wide splits on that offensive line with a spread offense for the Stoke College Badgers. Buck the motion man resets on the left side. Takai inside, wrapped up. And is that big Swanson Miller? It is. Well, you got a load on your back when you got 99. He's listed at 320 and six foot five. And I think that was after the three day fast. Because he's he's definitely bigger than 320. But he puts that load on the back. And Takai had nowhere to go. Yeah, I was down on the field before the game talking to Troy Morrell about, you know, different players on his team. Of course, talking to him about Marcus White. And I said, what about big number 99 over here? You know, Swanson Miller. He said, oh, that guy's playing on Sunday. 
<laughs> no hesitation. That guy's playing on Sunday. No question about it. He's got the size and he's got the speed to do it. And now it's third and ten. And if you're Takai at 187, that is a load on your back. Showing pressure, all movement up front. Miller got back, though. And a quick throw. Buck has the football, and Buck is brought down. And who's over there? Miller, along with Maurice Gray. Both ends of the numerical spectrum for the Grizzlies, number one and number 99 combining, and that 100 is about 500 pounds. I'm telling you, if you're Mark Pratt, if you're the center here, you've got to get that ball and, and snap it. As soon as the defender jumps across the line, snap the ball automatic. It doesn't matter. You get rid of the ball, you get the automatic you know, free play. Uh, you know, it's a five-yard penalty. And Maurice Gray is down. I think his own teammate landed on him, Swanson Miller. He says, man, that's a low. Mark Pratt out of Tooele. He's up. Now let's watch it right here at the end. He makes the tackle, goes down, and a linesman uh, gets in our way, but I think he just got rolled up on, and it looks like he's doing all right. He's jogging off under his own power. Looks to be doing okay right now. But it is now fourth down and six for Snow College, and you're starting to run out of real estate. I know it's only a minute 46 left in the third, but this is a fourth and six. If you don't get this conversion, you turn over near midfield. And the way that offense has been rolling for Butler, it could present more problems. Miller is over the center at the nose. Eastman throws the screen. Takai has it. Got a man to beat outside, and the open field tackle is made. Great play by Dorian Williams. But Takai looks to have a first down on the screen play. So just a nice screen pass. And credit Eastman, who's been under pressure with having the, the timing to wait till the last minute. And then here's the open field tackle, and it's well played by Dorian Williams. Huge fourth down conversions so far in this half by Neil Takai. That was a big one right there. He had to make, make a decision. I'm going to try to break it out wide, maybe not get the first down, or just turn it right up field and get the yards for the first down. He got it done. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Eastman now pressure showing from Butler as they bring the corner up. And they'll back out of it and just rush three. Eastman looking for somebody, going for the post. And a pass is incomplete and picked off. The interception by Dorian Williams, who came in front of the receiver. So the pass was thrown into double coverage, help from the underside. And the pass is picked by Dorian Williams. The timing was absolutely perfect on the play. You got Adam Franzen out there in that route. Dorian Williams is going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage on the top of him. He's just going to go up to fight for this ball. Williams goes up on top, comes back down with it. You see Franzen get hit after the, the interception was made. And then Williams just trying to find a little extra room. And the threat is snuffed out by Snow College. And they're trying to get the, the defense now trying to get this crowd into it. 48.3 seconds remaining third quarter. Big turnover, obviously, and that defense jumping around. Look at this. Look at this. Nobody's set. Nobody's playing a position. It's just kind of a, like a, uh, what, a fire drill out there. They did this last year in the Zions Bank Top of the Mountains Bowl, and they're winning against Coffeyville. The defense will come out. Everybody will jump all over the place, and then, then finally, you know, in the end, sort of settle it. They, you know where you're going, obviously, but you're, what you're trying to do, uh, you're just trying to confuse the offense on the other side. That time, it didn't work to their advantage by any means, but don't, don't you know... Uh, don't be surprised if they continue to stay in that because you, you hear the crowd getting excited about it right now. This is something to fire them up. Well, the clock is counting with 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And I'm not sure that there will be a play before the quarter ends. Two seconds, one. And that's going to do it. That's the end of three quarters of play here in Salt Lake City. And it is Butler Community College, the Grizzlies, ranked number two, coming into this game, leading by 22 points at the end of three quarters. 42 to 20 is the score when we come back for the final 15 minutes. Top of the Mountains Bowl brought to us in part by Far West Bank, a different kind of bank. And around that left side, you know, you look at what Butler is doing right now, and I got to believe in this fourth quarter, it's a matter of 
Let's be content with 42, but we're not going to sit on the lead. We're just going to try and run a little bit of clock. Now, out of bounds on that play, but it's a first down, and it does stop the clock. And you already saw from Snow College what they intend on doing, which is do anything that's going to, whatever it takes to win. Come on, this what I would refer to as like a, a circus type of offense. You got guys jumping all over the place. You know, you know they're going to come after you right now. And so going up top and going long, overthrowing his man was Mike Garrison, the quarterback. It was intended for Devin Cummings. Steve, earlier today down on the field, Colby Clausen was honored by Far West Bank, the scholar, scholar athlete of the game. And he got a nice uh, check presentation. Uh, how about Colby Clausen? 3.88 GPA, uh, pre-med student uh, and a Western States Football League Conference Player of the Year. He's married, signed with BYU, getting ready for a season coming up uh, where he will most likely be the replacement for Brian Keel on the defense for the Cougars. Well, he's had a great season, a great career. I'm sure he'd like it to end a little differently than it looks like it's going to right now. Pressure up front immediately and blowing up that play was the center of that defensive line. Now, did they come in too quickly? I'll tell you one thing, Tavita Hola was there almost before the football. You see if Tavita Hola is there. Oh, he just blew the up the center. Like, I agree with you. He may have just timed that perfectly. Eric Dahl, the center, just was going backwards. Yeah, I think he just got the push, and Tavita Hola at 310, 6'1", 3'10", just steamrolled that offensive line. But they will say, they'll say it was offsides, and it'll be a five-yard penalty against the Badgers. Well, he probably was in that neutral zone. He was there so quickly. But I'll tell you, he was, uh, he got the, if he didn't know the snap count, he's got the best reflexes we've ever seen. So it is a second down and five after the penalty. Hola again over Dahl, the center. Well, it gives you something to think about it, doesn't it? When you're, a, when you're the center and you just got steamrolled, even if the guy did jump a half second early. Ball carrier is Bell. Randell Bell brought down by Andrew Rich. And they're going to be short of the first down. It brings up third and short. Andrew Rich, good size, free safety, six foot three, two hundred and one pounds, out of Bonneville, the former Laker. Now out there with the Snow College Badgers. So it brings up third and about a yard and a half. And let's see if they go to the power game again. Johnson is the deep back. Johnson gets the call and the first down. And he's brought down on that play by Shane Hunter. Well, we just got handed our ballots for the uh, offensive and defensive MVPs for both schools. You got any thoughts about that? I'll tell you what, so far in this game, you've seen uh, plenty of Marcus White. He's got a sack in this game and plenty of uh, pass rushes. So he would certainly be one of the guys to be looking at. Yeah, I think he would get my defensive MVP award. And over on the sideline, number two, Bo Johnson. Bo you know Johnson what? I'm, with I'm, his longest run of the season yeah. with the 80-yard touchdown. But I, I'm tempted to give it to number eight, Garrison, because I'll tell you what, he kept his team in it as that pass is thrown, and there's going to be a late flag with an interference call, and I think that's an awful tough call on Jared Galvin. Really, really tough call. But Garrison. that's what it's going to be, a late a late. Uh, flag thrown and the guy that uh, the, the, whose pass was intended for was Veneri let's see this they'll, they'll huddle and talk about this let him talk it over for just a moment and Garrison was under pressure on that play as well went down hard was a little slow getting up Well, the crowd doesn't like the call, and let's watch it again and see. It looked to me like the arm came after the, the ball was past him, but maybe not. Well, yeah, you know what? That's uh, I think that's a tough call. Yeah, that, that, that is a, a difficult call to make, but you, you look, you got the arm wrapped around the receiver right there. There's, it, so you got your backhand on, on the, the, the back of the receiver, but it, that, that's, that, that's a very close call right there and a tough one. That's a tough call to make. But you think about it now, you know, is, is it balancing out? Because in the end, you, you look at the Butler and, and the call that went against them when they had a play that was called a fumble when, when the, 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 
the ball carrier was already down. So they, in the end, things balance out. Well, they do. And on this play, it is first and 10. Pressure coming up the middle now by Snow. Picked up by the blitz protection, and a pass is complete to the outside. Pass complete. Number 25 was the receiver on the play, and that's uh, a great play as far as, as far as the touch is concerned. That's why I'm going to give Garrison my offensive MVP vote. Watch this. Over the top. Just Got a man out there. there. And that's Cole Beschamp. And he catches the football, and I tell you what, I think uh, I think you got to give it to uh, you got to give it to him on that play. Nice, nice touch. There have been several times this game where Garrison has just you know put the right amount of touch on it, enough air underneath the ball just to drop it into the receiver's hands. Snow showing pressure again. Then they back out of it, and that's Bo Johnson, and Johnson picking his way through tacklers is going to score. There's a flag on the play, but Johnson, nobody ever got, got a hand on him. Yeah, wrapped no, him up. And part, part of it was there was a hold there. Now, he did a nice job, no question. Bo Johnson's kind of picking his way through it. Well, it is going to come back, but that doesn't negate the job that that young man did. What a terrific run. They're going to back him up because of the hold. You see, the, the hold is going to come over on the left side of the line. You watch Bo Johnson picking his way. He'll break through right here and start to break it off, uh, coming back at you on your television screen. But he just keeps his feet moving and gets into the end zone. So it's going to negate the run, but it certainly doesn't take away from the effort of Bo Johnson. We see why he rushed for over 1,500 yards this year, Alema. I mean, he was absolutely spectacular during the regular season and we saw that big burst of 80 yards today as Garrison throws to the outside and overthrows the intended receiver that was Tyrese Gaines who was the closest man to it and Gaines finds the pile of snow and he'll walk back out of the, uh, the sidelines as well and Gaines really if he had run that route properly would have probably had a reception on that he was uh, kind of half stepping that that route uh, to the outside and uh, if he had run full speed, he probably would have been right at the spot where Garrison had thrown it. Johnson gets the call, bounces to the outside, trying to get the corner. And wrestled down finally on the edge by Andrew Rich. But not before he struggled for another seven or eight yards. Colby Clawson also helping on that play, coming over to clean it up. You look at uh, Bo Johnson, he'll come up kind of just off tackle, and he just decides, I'm going to bounce this outside. I've got some room, and if I can get around to the outside, then you see Rich come up and just get the jersey. But look at look at Johnson. He, he doesn't want to go down. Clawson kind of helped make the decision for him just a little bit. And the thing, as we talked with the coaching staff before this game, what makes Bo Johnson so good is he's tough to bring down. He doesn't have great speed, but he's just got good instincts, and, and he's just a, a very tough runner. Well, it's third down now. Third and three, maybe four yards as Garrison looks, goes the other way, went to the end zone, and it's incomplete. In coverage on the play was Sky Pove, and the intended receiver was Tyrese Gaines. So it does bring up the fourth down situation, and now... You kick a field goal? Well, they said they're comfortable with their kicker from about 35 yards out, you know, or th from the 35-yard line in. I don't know that, that, that you go for it necessarily at this point. You, you pin, you go for it on fourth down, you pin them down here. Well, the difference between 22 points and 25 points, um, you know, is, is negligible. You've got to have a two-point conversion to get it to 22 and 25 the field goal so it looks like they are going to go for it on fourth down fourth and three don't have to get into the end zone got to get to about the two yard line and garrison will try and get it in the air lobs one to the end zone has a receiver but no overthrown intended for venery or oh, it's venery excuse me venery bryce venery and so turning it over on downs. And that's probably the best way to do it from a 
purely politically correct situation. You're if, up 22 points, right. and, you know, at, at, at this point in the game. The three is almost certain, especially given their field goal kicker and, and the field conditions now. In the first half, not so much. But it is turned over on downs, and when we come back, it will be Snow College trailing by 22. Can they cut into that lead? Turning the ball over on downs, Butler College, as they went for it on fourth and three. And it will be a first down at the five-yard line. First and ten now for Snow College, trailing 42-20 to 20 with 12 minutes and 44 seconds left in this football game, which they are hosting the top of the Mountains Bowl. Eastman throws. Got a man wide open, and he has a completion to Regan Buck. And Regan Buck is out at about the 44-yard line before Maurice Gray gets him. So can this offense that's number two in the country come back from 22 points down against Butler? Second ranked team in the country, Butler. First ranked team in the country, Snow in, division, in the junior college division, battling it out for a national championship. Four titles for Butler in their history. One for Snow back in, way back in what, 1985? 1985, I don't know if that's way back. Uh, it's definitely way back. It was after you played at BYU, so <laughs> no, it's no, definitely it's during, way back. During, I, it's still, during the time I played there. It's still way back. 22 years is way back. I don't care how you stack it. Right? He doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Eastman under pressure. Throwing downfield. Got a man again. And Butler pulls it in at the 15-yard line. And there's that passing game that has been gone all day. Sean Quez Powell was the man who got beaten in coverage. So just that quickly, here we have the Badgers knocking on the door. I talked to Steve Coburn. What made the... the John Eastman, different from Kate Cooper. He said Kate Cooper might be a little better at, at making decisions, but no question, Eastman's got the stronger arm. We've seen it on the last two plays, both of them connections to Regan Buck. But what we've also seen is Buck completely left alone. Nobody near him. And it's a first down at the 15-yard line for the Badgers. Takai is the single setback. To the air again. Eastman looks to the outside, safety valve, it's complete. Looked down the middle first and then came off his primary read and went to Joseph Sawyer. Sawyer, one of two tight ends that are implemented in the offense for Snow College already earlier today. Tui Tupou had a touchdown pass. This time you'll see Sawyer just releasing to the left. He's got the underneath route. He stays in and blocks for a second and then he comes out, makes the reception and uh, pick up of about seven yards. And fumbled the ball at the end of the play, and it was actually recovered by Kimball Burton. So fortunate for the Stowe College Badgers. Deep pitch to Takai, steps inside a block, and Takai very close to the goal line, stopped at about the one and a half yard line. We've seen that play before. Got the tight end out in front of him. 
this formation you got Tui Tupou playing in that uh, fullback position then you got Swanson at the tight end so basically you got two extra big blockers along with your tackle and your guard on that side you just run off to that side let those guys kick out block and Takai came back against the green went down to the one yard line well it's first and goal from the one now and again Snow College trying to come from behind Narrowed the gap to 15, only to see it balloon back to 22 as they gave up another touchdown. Peter Tui Tupo is in the slot as the lead back. They give to Takai straight up the middle. Lots of white shirts there to meet him. No signal yet. I think he's going to be stopped short. He is. The official indicating second and goal. Tyler Jessen was one of those big bodies that got a hold of him before he could break the plane of the goal. A nice job right there by Butler on the goal line stand. We talk about the big bodies, the battle in the trenches, doing a nice job. You got uh, big men like Swanson Miller just stacking up the middle. Still a yard away from Pater. Snow trying to get into the end zone, trying to narrow this margin, maybe make it workable with a little over 11 minutes remaining. Takai jumps and he's thrown back. No, he got into the end zone. Broke the plane of the goal and got into the end zone for six. And now the PAT attempt with 10.05 remaining. If they get the PAT, you're down now by 15 points. It's a workable margin if you could get to stop. As we saw how quickly that offense can score. There's the leap. Just got the nose of the football over. And a PAT coming now from the toe of Joe Phillips. Missed one today. Can't, yeah, and you can't you can't say that that was his fault on the one that was missed. That was, no, the snap the was, was high. Sloppy snap was high. This one is up, and yeah, this one is good. And you, you see the goalposts actually blending in with the snow on the benches. They basically are well hidden, but it was good enough for the PAT. 42 to 27 is the score. Snow College trying to stage a rally here in the national championship game. Snow College a moment ago scoring a touchdown to pull 42-27 as they try to get back into this football game. Top of the Mountains Bowl brought to us in part by Far West Bank, a different kind of bank. You know, that graphic showed up a whole bunch easier in the first half when it was a white field. <laughs> <laughs> Better contrast Absolutely. the first half. Nobody planned for the, uh, the green field to reappear <laughs> when they colored that graphic green. Well, deep to receive is Andre Jones going to receive the kick of Joe Phillips. And this Badger defense needs to uh, get a stop or get a takeaway, give it back to the offense and see if they can't get an opportunity to uh, get really get back into this football game. They've got 10 minutes, so with the kind of offense they have, a lot of time. But so far, Butler has been very good at controlling the clock and also getting something out of the offense as Jones fumbles the kickoff. And the delay gave him just enough time to get past the first wave before he's bumped out of bounds near the 30-yard line. In fact, right on the 30-yard line. Penalty right at midfield as a couple of the Butler Badgers were all over one of the cover men for Snow College. And uh, I, I looked down there at the what's going on down there. They there are two guys on top of them and they're just holding them down. But, they, you know, there, there was too much activity going on. And it's going to be a hold. So the Grizzlies will get penalized for that right there. No question they're going to back him up, and that doesn't uh, obviously help the cause for Butler. Major penalty. It's going to move him back to about the 20-yard line, and that's where they'll put it in play. Andre Jones, little equipment check there. Equipment malfunction, which is different than a wardrobe malfunction. That's right. I want you to know. <laughs> let's not get those we, two. We can broadcast the equipment yeah, let's malfunction. Let's not get those two confused, all right? First and 10 from the 20-yard line now. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Mike Garrison, the quarterback. I formation backfield. Give us to the second back through. Still on his feet. And it's Bo Johnson again. Bo Johnson gets a five-yard pickup out to the 25-yard line. Rich was the one who made the stop on the play. 
And I'll tell you, I think that Butler would be happy if they can just continue to play just like that. Five yards a crack, hand it off to Bo Johnson, follow your big lineman off to the right side, go in between the tackles, eat up the clock as it continues to tick away. 9.26 left to play in this national title game. He actually gets six on the carry by the time they give him his forward motion. And he'll try it again. Johnson again, and Johnson still on his feet. Finally wrestled down. James Freed was one of the men who made the stop, along with Braden Frampton, but it's a first down again. And the umpire with the most dangerous position. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Take a look at where the umpire is. He's right here. He's going to move off to the side, and he's going get, to gonna get knocked down right there. Boom, he's down. Man, and then he gets rolled on. That's even worse. Over the top came Wade Weibert. 6'5", 297. Watch, okay, this guy, and then boom, the white shirt comes right over the top of him, Wade Weiber. So that's insult to injury, but it is a first down at the 37-yard line now. Grizzlies with the lead, the football, and they just like to chew up some clock. Oh, hit the backfield was Randell Bell, the ball carrier, getting to him was Shane Hunter. Blew up the play at the line of scrimmage and then just got to the ball carrier. Shane Hunter, 5'11", 226 pounds, coming up from that linebacker position into the backfield. Boom, makes the contact. Great textbook type of tackle, bringing him down. Got a little help on the play by Chris Finch to clean things up. A loss of four. Gets his 11th tackle for a loss on the season. But the clock continues to run now. Inside eight and a half minutes remaining in this football game. It's still a two-possession game. A deep toss goes to Randell Pell. Trying to string it out, and that defense did. And coming up to make a play was Andrew Rich, the safety, number one. And he's feeling it, and so is this crowd right now. And I don't know about you, but Rich just might get my uh, vote for the defensive player of the game from the Snow College side of things. He's been very active. Randell Bell's been successful kind of going out to the outside. This time, just great pursuit coming from inside out by the Snow Badger defense. And it's third and long coming up. 18 yards for a first down. Frampton trying to get the crowd involved here. Opportunity to maybe get a pick here if you can get a turnover by Snow. Butler goes to the air. Pass is incomplete, short for Jones. And the defense holds and forces the punt. And so the offense will get it back with over seven minutes remaining. If you can score quickly here and get it down to a one possession football game, you're back in business if you're Snow College. Buck will drop deep to receive. Punt from Zach Stetler. And he's at his own 30-yard line is Buck. Regan Buck trying to make something happen. Now they've got the return on. And that ball will bounce, and it takes a great bounce for Butler. Looked like it was going out of bounds, and now it does, but not until it hits the 23-yard line. Actually, about a 12, 15-yard pickup on the roll. That punt looked like it was going to, uh, going to be a very short one as you look on the sideline and taking his helmet off and... Talking to himself, Mike Garrison, the quarterback. He's a competitor, isn't you know, he? You, you talked about this. Garrison, you don't often see a guy like the quarterback coming off the field, you know, at the end of a punt. But you mentioned he's the, he's the long snapper. He was down there getting Absolutely. ready to down that ball as well. Well, and we told you his story, and that is last year he was cut from the team a year ago. Couldn't make this football team, this, this uh, Butler team. This year he comes back and becomes a starting quarterback and looks to be leading him to a national championship. Stayed on as a student coach a year ago. That's commitment. From the shotgun for the first time in a long time. And he wasn't ready for it, and it's turned over. Well, they put him in the gun, and the ball's still loose, and it's picked up by Butler. Wow. That football, I don't know whether he just didn't have the right snap count, but that ball was fallen on by Chris Campa. He was a little slow getting up. But watch this, from the gun for the first time since the first quarter, and that snap was low, and it just didn't look like John Eastman had any idea it was coming. Eastman was looking off to his left at first because he had a man open. Regan Buck was over there in the slot, and he was uncovered, and he was probably, he was looking at that situation. Then he was checking over to the right just for the last second before he, he gave the, the, the signal to snap the ball, and then the ball came before he was ready for it. 
unbelievable. And again, you wondered why he would be in the shotgun after all this time under center. Nevertheless, bottom line is big break for Butler. They have the football. One more, one more score should just about sew this up. And there's Bo Johnson going in untouched. Bo Johnson into the end zone again. And that ought to do it. That really should put the final nail in that coffin. And again, for Snow College, just so uncharacteristic, that kind of a mistake. And then look at this, Johnson, everything sealed to the inside, and Johnson just strolls into the end zone with a little bit of flourish. PAT coming. Snow College decided to stack the box on that one, and Bo Johnson just alertly took it outside and walked in untouched. 49-27 of the folks who made the drive or the flight, however they got here from Kansas, pretty happy about this one because Butler with a 49-27 lead appears headed for their fifth national championship. They got four in the books already and for Snow College, their dream of a national title and an undefeated season looks to be coming to an end here in Rice Eccles Stadium. There's Regan Buck set to receive the kickoff. Both teams came in 11-0, ranked number one and number two, and right now number two has taken it to number one as Buck chases down this kick and feels it at the 16-yard line. Looking for a crease, can't find it, and he's wrestled down at about the 26. So Snow College really had an opportunity, Alema, before they turned that football over in the shotgun. John Eastman, who wasn't expecting the snap, apparently. It was a low snap, and it was recovered by Butler, and then they turned it into seven points with the Bo Johnson touchdown and the PAT, and this really has solidified probably the win for them. With a 22-point margin, even with the offense, the, the, uh, with the ability of a Snow College, it looks to be too much. You know, one of the things that you deal with when you got two teams like this that are undefeated and really dominant in their conferences, and both of these teams are exactly that, is you, you don't have any experience playing from behind. If you're Snow College, you look at, you know, the, the games that they have won this year, 69 to nothing in one game, 52 nothing, 48 to 17. I mean, they're, they are rarely, if ever, playing from behind in a game. So when they get in the situation like they are right now, it, it's such unfamiliar territory for, for the the offense especially that uh, sometimes you feel out of sorts well I'd be surprised if we see John Eastman in the shotgun a couple of times they've tried it today they had trouble in the first quarter when the snow covered this field and was coming down in blizzard proportions and then here in the fourth quarter on the snap that caused the turnover a moment ago as the pass is overthrown intended for Buck and if you're the Grizzlies right now, that defensive unit, you just keep everything in front of you. Don't worry about it. And then when the offense gets on the field, you can look for them to chew some clock. Now, the thing about it is that the Grizzlies uh, have been in kind of that prevent type of offense. They were on that last drive. And uh, that allowed, really, Reagan Buck to get a couple of big plays, a couple of possessions a go for Snow College. And if they stay in that, then maybe you can work your way down the field. Empty backfield now and five in the pattern. Eastman is in the shotgun. Four-man rush coming off the edge. Eastman throws out of it, and it's complete. Short of a first down, but Kyle Hatch was the uh, receiver on that play. So the reception and a completion. Pick up a six. And third down and four now facing the Badgers. Eastman again to the air. Eastman stepping up, avoiding the pressure, and it's picked. The pass is picked. Number four, Antonio Felder, stepping in front of the receiver. Just jumped the route, was able to make the pick, and that should just about close the door. And you can expect a steady diet of number two, Bo Johnson, and number 34, Randell Bell, to try and eat up the last six minutes and four seconds of this clock. Obviously, if you're the quarterback right now, you're the Snow College Badgers, you're trying to make something happen. But what you can't have happen is you can't turn the ball over right now. you got to keep possession and try to move the ball down the field. And that's exactly what they didn't need was to turn the ball back over to the Grizzlies, who can eat up the rest of the clock if they play their cards right. Number 80, putting on his helmet, Wayne Bonner. A pair of touchdown catches today, big plays. But it's first and 10, and there is the give on first down. Bo Johnson bounces to the outside. 
Switches the ball to the outside hand, cuts back against the grain, and stays in bounds inside the 30-yard line. A lot of things happened on that play by Bo Johnson. First, he saw there was nothing inside. He was able to get the speed to get the edge. And then when he did, move the ball to the outside arm and then cut back against the grain, picked up another three or four yards before he was wrestled down. Now Bo Johnson playing on what looks like a hobbled ankle, uh, which happened earlier in the game when Paia fell on top of him. Just having a great game today. Has a long touchdown run, 80 yards, his longest of the season uh, uh, in this game today. And that one, as you mentioned, very, uh, you know, he just he said, you know, I could go outside, maybe get a few extra yards, but I might get out of bounds. So it keeps it in bounds, keeps the clock going. Deep toss from the 28-yard line, and that's Randell Bell spinning off tackles as there's a Badger down on the field. And Bell gets inside the 20-yard line. Injured player is number 90, Thomas, excuse me, uh, number 90 is James Iono. And he is down on one knee at about the 25-yard line. There you see Iono gingerly testing that right leg. And going to shake it off. And then you see those little black BBs that are part of this, the rubberized pellets that are the bed of this turf here. And they get your shoes, they stick to your legs, they get through your face mask, in your mouth. You certainly today, hope that Iona is okay. Yeah, today they've been held down by the, uh, by the snow. But it is a first down. And the clock continues to roll as we approach the five-minute mark here in the football game. Butler with the lead at 49 to 27, seemingly on the way to their fifth national championship. Bell again. And Bell down to the 15 yard line. Time now to take a look at the electrifying play of the game brought to us by the National Electrical Contractor Association working together. Comes from the first half and it really got things started for Butler's Wayne Bonner. Went high for the jump ball in the snow this morning. And take a look at this. This was what it looked like through the blizzard. And that ball goes up into the snow, comes back down, and Bonner brings it in for our electrifying play of the game. He's had two touchdowns today, but that one in the adverse conditions gets to be the most electrifying play of the game. And uh, I think he saw himself. He went, hey, that was me. That was me up there. Second down at eight. On the ground again, Johnson slipping tackles. Johnson falling forward, and Johnson nearly at the five-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. It will be, and the clock approaches four minutes. Snow with three timeouts left. And the question is, do you burn them when you're down by 22 points? A tough situation where you are right now. Look at Steve Coburn on the sideline. Has to feel like this one is kind of slipping away. It's been a great season, obviously, for him, though, unbeaten. Great season a year ago. But today, it just wasn't the Snow Badgers day. In the snow, it was Butler as Johnson tries to pick his way through traffic and goes inside the five-yard line. Braden Frampton wraps him up for Snow College. And there's a flag on the play. So we'll let the officials sort this one out. It's a face mask against the defense. So it's going to march them closer to the end zone. Yeah, the microphone isn't working, but you saw the indication. And so half the distance are going to move them even further closer to the end zone again. And how about that line of the Butler Grizzlies today as they've been able to open the holes for their running game? Chappelle, Weibert, Dahl, Dolman, Dercher. The D's. Well, at least bunch three of them. D's right there. Well, they graded out for A's today. I'll guarantee you when they take a look at them on film. They certainly did. It's a lot of beef up front, all about 300 pounds is what they average across the front there. Big tackles, both uh, over six foot five. Garrison now. Give again to Johnson. Johnson met at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards on the play. Chris Finch was in there, number 95. Andrew Mitchell. They just stood him up and drove him back for one of the few times this afternoon. 
And we're just inside three minutes now remaining in this football game. 49 to 27. It has been all Butler since halftime when they scored twice in the space of two minutes or four minutes, excuse me, in the third quarter. And from that point on, never headed. Snow did get to within 15 a couple of times, but uh, every time they would score, Butler would come back and answer. And Garrison now trying to put the final cap on this one and get his team into the end zone one more time. As the deep toss goes to Johnson, and oh, is he taken off his feet? Chris Finch got him up around the shoulder pads and just decleated him. Chris Finch at 6'4", 267. And watch as he just kind of takes his feet out from under him. Just coming off the left side of the line. Boom! Makes the hit. Great defensive play. Yeah, that's some kind of impact. You I'm not see. sure how Finch ends up unblocked there. I don't know, but the big fella got to the ball carrier on that play, and it brings up third down and goal from the five-yard line. And it would be at least something if Snow can stop them from scoring on this drive. Garrison to Bell. Randell Bell, and he's bulldogged down. On the tackle, Stephen Paella. And he comes up short, which brings up fourth the last time. This was a fourth down situation. They went for it, did Butler? And you can expect them to do the same thing again. And this is that no man's land for a coach. You know you've got the game won 49-27. What do you do here, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you kick the definite three, in which case you just pile it on, or do you go for, go for the touchdown, and if you get it, then people say you're piling it on. You really don't have a choice. I think you go for it just the way they are on fourth down because the odds on making it here are a lot less than they are on kicking a field goal. And you just put it on the defense for Snow College and say, we're giving you a chance to stop us. That's exactly right. And Johnson makes sure that they don't. Johnson just puts his head down, gets into the end zone again. And it's some kind of impressive offensive performance by the Butler College Grizzlies. 55 points on the scoreboard. Bo Johnson's got to be close to, if not over 200 yards on the game. We mentioned earlier in the second half, he had an 80 yard touchdown run. Here's Bo Johnson, he's gonna go off the, uh, you know, just off the guard, boom. He, he makes his decision, puts his head down. He knows he's only got to get a two yards to get into the end zone, and he got it done. PAT coming. And it is up and good. 56-27 is the score. And it has been Butler Community College showing today why they were 11-0 and just not the kind of day that the Snow College Badgers and Coach Steve Colburn would have hoped for in this televised national championship game. Troy Morrell and his team give him a lot of credit. They came into a hostile environment here, not only hostile from a fan standpoint, but from a weather standpoint. And all they've done today is just dominated a football game against a very good Snow College team. No, you're absolutely right. The advantages were all stacked in favor of Snow College because they were traveling, you know, basically of 60, 70 miles away from home from Ephraim to come here and play at Rice Eccles Stadium. This is their game. Zions Bank Top of the Mountains Bowl was actually built for, uh, for the Snow College Badgers. Take a look at Butler, and the celebration begins on the sideline for them, their fifth national championship since 1981. Their first, uh, uh, the most recent one back in 2003. You, you gotta remember, they, they came to this very venue a couple of years ago and lost 17 to 14. I asked, uh, you know, Coach Morrell about that. He said, you know what, we're, we're, that, that was a situation where we came in and Snow College, a very good team that year. Neither one of us were playing for the national championship, but we've been here before in 2003. We're here to do it again. And there's the kick, and it is fielded by Kimball Burton. Burton reversing field and to no avail as he is brought down on that play. And that's just about going to do it. Making the tackle was Sean Swenson. Excuse me, it was uh, number 26, Daniel Rumfeld, who made the tackle. And you look at the that sideline for Snow, and, you know, they had a great season, but there's only one winner at the very end. They were unbeaten coming into this game. One common opponent, Air Force Prep. And the advantage of that had gone, in the score at least, to Butler by about five or six points in terms of the margin. But Snow had played Air Force prep the very first game of the season, and Butler had played them a little deeper into the schedule. But today, the Butler Grizzlies show they are the best football team on the field. Eastman has gone all the way. 
gives to Takai. You have to wonder how much the loss of Sony Sotelli hurt the 1,300-yard rusher for Snow College. Yeah, not only that, but 1,300 yards, 18 touchdowns. The guy was a touchdown machine, basically, for the Snow College Badgers this year. And take nothing away from Neil Takai, who had a, a great performance in this game, uh, got into the end zone for Snow College, but at the same time, he, he really had nobody that could spell him. And, and it was a, a one-two punch uh, throughout the course of the season with Sonny Sotelli and Neil Takai, just like it has been for Bo Johnson, along with Randell Bell on the other side for Butler in, the, you know, in their season. And that's going to do it as the two teams come together, exchange handshakes, and over on the Butler side of things, the uh, Gatorade comes out. But that's going to do it. That'd be a cold bath today, but I don't think that head coach, Troy Morales, feels much uh, pain out there as this team has won the national championship, the fifth national title for the Butler Grizzlies as they win it over the Snow College Badgers, 56-27. to 27. Butler comes in number two. They go out number one. It was a game which we saw a lot of offense, especially in the second half once they got the snow off the field. And a total of 83 points put up on the board, 56 of them by Butler today. The embraces on the Butler side, it will make that uh, trip back to Kansas a whole bunch more pleasant for that football team. So congratulations to both teams and a special congratulation to the Butler Grizzlies. And there's the bath coming up. And a coach says, no, 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 stay away. It's the only thing that misfired all day for Butler. Well, nothing feels better than the snow after the game is over. You just won a national championship, 56 to 27. Welcome back to Rice Eccles Stadium. The Butler Grizzlies enjoying the fruits of their labor this afternoon as Mike Garrison, the quarterback, number eight, the man who was cut from the football team a year ago, stayed on as a student coach and comes back to become the starting quarterback, leads his team to an unbeaten season and their fifth national championship. Talk about Cinderella stories, and there's number 80, Alema Wayne Bonner, who caught two big touchdown catches, and number two, Bo Johnson, who ran for several more. Yeah, Bo Johnson, you know, he came into this game averaging about 130 yards per game. He had that uh, early in the second half and finishes with over 200 yards in this game. And Butler just proving that they were the better team today, the team certainly with more experience as far as national championships are concerned, and they walked away with a huge victory, 56-27. to 27. Well, we hope you enjoyed our telecast today, and uh, congratulations to the Butler Community College Grizzlies and also the Snow College Badgers. It started in snow. It wound up with clearing skies, but it was all Butler as they put it on Snow College this afternoon by a count of 56 to 27. Steve Brown for Alema Harrington and our entire broadcast crew saying thanks for joining us this afternoon. Once again, the final score, Butler 56, Snow 27, from Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City. Good afternoon, everybody.